All right, we're back with Tacey Zuff, who is, of course, the pharmacist, one of the pharmacists at uh, Gerdes Pharmacy here in Conneaut. How are you doing, Tacey? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Thank you. Um, I see her all the time. I'm, always, I'm, living, I'm living in the pharmacy <laughs> anymore. <laughs> uh, everything's kind of like going down the hill, so I have to go in and get my prescriptions and stuff. Um, Tacey, uh, we try to get her on more than she is able to come on. You've been pretty, pretty busy because you're raising kids and all that sort of stuff going yeah. on. Um, got to ask you this. I haven't had a chance to look outside. Was it still raining when yeah, you came in? Yeah, it's miserable out there. Is it really? Mm -hmm. And it's cold. It says it's, it's 50, chilly. but I don't think it, it is. It doesn't feel now. like that. It mm -hmm. doesn't feel like that. Um, we like to have her on because she she's going to be talking to, uh, to us about a lot of different things over the ne next few months. Uh, with summer coming, allergy season, sun, and all the things out there that we got to prepare ourselves to, to take care of ourselves. Um, but you have some things here, Tacey, kind of a random thing here for today uh, mm -hmm. that are happening at Curtis, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. One is the new bubble packing program. What mm -hmm. the heck is that? Well, um, we've been doing this for a while, but it's kind of been expanding recently. Um, a lot of people have been coming to us with their family members are getting older and they're forgetting to take their medicines and um, you know we're finding out that they just don't remember did I take that didn't I take that so what we're doing is um, we have two different programs these are just M&Ms in there but for visual <laughs> aid um, we can fill them in these bubble packs and then so you know well this one has 31 but you can know okay 30 days in the month I took my pills that day uh -huh. and how we would do this one is if it, you only get one medicine so if you only get one blood pressure medicine, we can do it like this. Right, right. And we can, you know, send it out to you, and then you know, and then when the month's up, you're good. Or if you take a multiple, which most people do, a multiple of medicines, we can do it like this. So then um, every day of the week has four bubbles. So this would be one week's worth of pills. This is a month here. Right. But this one would be one week's worth of pills. So if you take three pills in the morning, there would be three in there for the day. Um, and then your evening dose and your nighttime dose wow. and you take a noon dose. You guys would do that? Mm -hmm. What we do Doesn't is... Doesn't that create a lot of work? It is a lot of work. <laughs> Actually, it takes a lot longer to do this than it does to just count some pills and put them in a bottle. Right, right. But, um, but it's worth it if it helps people out. And we've been noticing a lot of improvement with some of our older people. Um, the family members have been telling us it works out really well. And um, the, the people have... I've, I've noticed a difference because I can tell they're remembering to take their medicines and when they come in they're a lot more did you just start this Tacey or is we've been doing it off and on for a while we've had a couple people that um, we've been doing for a couple years yeah. um, but it was always like as a request and actually these ones are kind of new we've only been doing these for the last couple months we always had these ones and we supply medication to some of the nursing homes and this is what we do for them because okay. they have to have them like this so right, we'll right. send these packs over to them so we've been doing those for years but um, now we have a couple people I probably have about six or seven people that I do monthly um, on these new medicines and it really does seem to help them out. So I give them, one of our ladies calls them her books. I need my storybook of meds because this is what it looks like. So she gets four of these a month and I write on there week one, week two, yeah. and then she knows you know what week to start and then she'll just start taking them. And the labels for your medicines like that would normally go on your bottle, they'll go right here so you know what they are and each one will have a description of um, the medicine. So it would be, be like blood pressure blue pill, you know, it would say the name of the medicine and then what color it was so then you knew which ones you gotcha. were taking. Gotcha. Let me ask you this, Tyson. Mm -hmm. Like last week I had to come and see you mm -hmm. um, for amoxicillin. Mm -hmm. And I'm sp you had told me you take three a day, mm -hmm. um, morning, well, say six o'clock, two o'clock, and then ten o'clock mm -hmm. at night. Well, I forgot a couple two o'clocks, and mm -hmm. so I didn't take it then. Should I have taken it like at four or five when I remember? Yeah, actually, that would be better. Really? I mean, the, it, with antibiotics, now that's something different. That would never go in. Correct. These. This is like your everyday kind of medicine. But um, for antibiotics, it's best to take them around the clock, so then you're having complete coverage. The way an antibiotic works is it, it's fighting those... Um, the bacteria, right. and it, their effectiveness kind of goes down, and then when it goes down, that's when you need to take another one. So if you forget to 
take it, then mm -hmm. you're kind of not getting as much coverage and then the bacteria can grow. Okay. And then if you take it too late, you know, but it's better to take it late than not at all and to skip it. Gotcha. So if yours was an every eight hour dose. What would you, what would you say, say it was uh, blood pressure? You're off four hours, so you forget. I still want you to take it. You still? It, yeah, if it's something like you are supposed to take it in the morning and you completely forget, you're having a bad day and you don't remember till nighttime on a blood pressure, then maybe you shouldn't take it. Okay. And just wait till tomorrow to okay. skip that dose. Um, or sometimes if you're sick, sometimes when people are sick, they don't like to take their medicines because, you know, if they're nauseous and right, right. things like that, you know, if they have the flu or something like that going on, sometimes they get messed up. But Usually, if you remember it a couple hours later, go ahead and take it because you want to get that coverage. It's better than not having it. Gotcha. Ever. It's best to take your medicines on a schedule, but if you if you get a little off, it's still better to just take it when you remember. You, you and I were talking the other day, um, and I thought it was an interesting conversation because you mentioned a lot of your friends will call up and say, hey, Tacey, I got pills that I've had in the, the cabinet yeah. for five, six years are they still good and, and you more or less said no right. they're not right they're usually as a rule of thumb you can usually figure that pills are good for about a year after you get them we use them so often you know they they're rolling. on our shelf yeah we use them so much that they really don't go old on our shelves mm -hmm. and then um so you figure you have about a year sometimes it's longer than that mm -hmm. um and some medicines um will actually get toxic if they're over date uh oh if it's like if it's a short amount of time, really, it's not going to happen. They mm -hmm. usually give you some leeway on that. Even like over-the-counter things, mm -hmm. um, they're not going to put the expiration date as the date they go toxic on there because they know people are going to take them later than that. Mm -hmm. But you want to kind of stick to that. But when you get a prescription, you can figure it's probably good for about a year. If it's been in your cabinet for a year, I'd probably get rid of it. You never know. Most things just lose their potency, but some things can become, you know, they start to get bad. I've got, like, I've had... Um or maybe it was Michelle's stuff that she'll put away. And they're like five or six years old. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as a matter of fact, they were antibiotics. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I could take these and I wouldn't have to get... Well, she said, no, you don't want to do that. Talk to Tasty about it. And that's mm -hmm. why we kind of got on the subject. Yeah, and that's not a good thing to do either because I know everybody does it. But you, when you have an antibiotic, you have to finish that whole course. Because like I said, right. once it you stop taking it, if it hasn't done all its job, you, you can even feel better. You'll be taking an antibiotic, you'll have a cold, or you know, a sinus infection or something, you'll start to feel better, so a lot of people will stop mm -hmm. it. But that doesn't mean you're completely better. Correct. And um, there's still bacteria in there that can still start growing, and then if you stop your antibiotic, then that bacteria is already knows how to fight that antibiotic. Mm -hmm. Then if, it's mm -hmm. a, if you don't kill it all, then if you try to take that one again, it's not gonna work. And that's the problem with, um, like antibiotic susceptibility, diseases not being able to be fought with antibiotics is because we overuse them. Mm -hmm. And people do things like that. They stop taking them when they're not good. And then, so then when they get sick again, you can't use that same one. You're gonna have to go use something else and right. then something else and then something else. And the bacteria are pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> they can figure out, you know, all the, you know, the attack weapons that we have on them, all those right. antibiotics, they can figure out and then make themselves resistant to them. And that's where we get into these super bugs and, you know, mm -hmm. when you're in the hospital and you get the MRSA and things like that, that's why it's hard to fight that because for so long we've abused antibiotics. Right, right. You know, and I understand. I, I when you're know, sick, you just want something to make you feel better. But When my sister was young, mm -hmm. um, she had all kinds of problems and stuff, and mm -hmm. she, they put her on antibiotics, and it really, I think they overdid it mm -hmm. because it caused teeth problems and different things. There's a I mean, they have a place, and they are good for certain things, but, like, if antibiotics don't work for viruses, and so, you know, if you have a cold, an antibiotic is not, not going to work. It. And some people get it, and sometimes it's hard to tell what's causing your sickness, too. Um, so people always want something to make them feel better, which is understandable, because mm -hmm. when you're miserable, you want something right. to work. But a lot of times, that's what the problem is, and that's why antibiotics don't work. So when you do have an antibiotic, you should take it on schedule, like you're supposed to is real important to remember and to finish the whole thing. So you should never have antibiotics sitting in your cabinet. You know, you, um, and I, I see a lot, but I, you, you always seem to be pretty healthy. So you, you're around people all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I noticed that with a lot of medical people, they, they don't seem to get sick. I think we become a little susceptible because we're constantly 
exposed to it. Do you think that's what it is? Yeah, we're constantly exposed to it on a small level. So, you know, people are coming in, sneezing on us and coughing on right, us. Right, right. And so we work up a little bit of an immunity to really? it, I, I think. Because, well, I used to get sick a lot more when my kids were little, it seems like, because they oh, yeah. would bring kids stuff bring home that. to me. But now that they're not so small anymore, it, I think that we do kind of... You know, doctors don't get sick all that often. No, they don't. Either. No, I've talked to doctors about that. Yeah, I think we're just, just constantly exposed to it. So yeah, you, and I think you, you probably do the same thing. Oh, like tons you, of washing your Washing your hands and, and stuff. Yeah. Always taking care of yourself and stuff. But, uh, you know, you, another thing here, um, the sink my meds. You know, you have to explain this to me because I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> this is a brand new thing we're starting, and I have only got about five or ten customers on it so far but what it is it's similar to the bubble packing you get your pills in a bottle but we have so many people and I don't know if you're one of them but so many people that they get you know on the first week of the month they have to come in and get two of their prescriptions and then the next week they have to get another one and then they so they're there all the time and they mm -hmm. get sick of seeing us <laughs> I'm sure they don't want to keep you know if people are busy they don't want to be running to the drugstore all the mm -hmm. time so what we can do is um, it kind of messes you up that first month but we can give you kind of weird amounts of your medicine to even you up all on the same day so then you can just come in once a month and get everything oh. and it's so much more helpful for people to really remember. i could see that yeah i mean if you're only on one or two things it's really not that big of a deal but if you're on we have people that are on like 10 things and 14 things uh -huh. they have to come and because of insurances you can't really um it kind of got that way because I think before nobody cared if you got things early and people would kind of just get all right. the stuff at one time. But now with um, insurances saying you can't get things early refills, you can only get it a couple days early, mm -hmm. um, it kind of messed everybody up and got them off of sync. So now um, if you, it, it's a little bit of a process to kind of figure it out, but that first month we can kind of get you all on schedule will give you weird amounts of everything like oh you only you're gonna need 10 of these you're only gonna need 22 of these and whatever to kind of even you up on the same day and then that next month you'll be good for mm -hmm. the next time and how we've been doing it with most people is I can call them the week before they're due and say okay has anything changed and if they say no then I can just go ahead and fill it when they're due so then we can say okay well we'll have all your stuff ready next Tuesday and then they can come in on Tuesday and get all their mm -hmm. stuff or we can deliver it to them because we do do deliveries and there's no charge for the sink my meds but there is for the bubble packing we charge a dollar a prescription That's so it? yeah so if you get 10 things it would be 10 extra dollars to get the bubble do you, how does that work I, I hate to be overly curious about this but it does fascinate <laughs> me um you have to put the pills inside those little bubble packing yeah things. this is like a um it's like a folder this this thing opens up, oh. so it's like a trifold, and we put the plastic pieces in and fill them up, and then fold it over and seal it. It's like a sticky. How about this one? The same thing. Same thing. It opens up like a book, like that. See, so it put, doesn't like, look like we that. peel off a sticky part and put it together. Oh, for and goodness sake. Seal it up. Wow. Yeah, they're kind of neat. I think it's a really good idea. I think mm -hmm. it's another good. You know, you mentioned deliveries. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if a lot of people realize that you do. Yeah, we deliveries. do deliver. We do. Um, our deliveries go out Monday through Friday. Um, if you call by noon, we can get them out that day. Um, if not, it, it would be the next day. And our deliveries, we don't deliver like you can't call up and say, I, I want my stuff now and we'll deliver it in 10 minutes because our delivery driver's only there certain hours. Okay. So they usually go out between 2 and 3. So he's usually on the road between 2 and 4 every day. Um, and he takes them all over. Only Connie on you know, city. Right. We don't go right. out further than that. And it costs a dollar. So if you get a big that's bag of prescriptions, cheap. it's still a dollar. Right. It's, I mean, with the price of gas and stuff, that's really not yeah. that bad. But it really helps for some people can't get out, you know. It, uh, it's hard yeah. for, especially in the winter. We do a lot more deliveries in the winter because some people just can't. I was wondering how they did that. Does Carrie get in the car and drive it? No, we have a delivery driver. <laughs> oh, okay. And everybody loves him. Clarence is great. Clarence. Mm -hmm. Was he the guy that was there the other day? Yeah, big real, guy. Big guy was real friendly. Very friendly. Yeah, there, he has some special um, people that he delivers to that we know when he's going there. They, you know, they give him coffee. And <laughs> <laughs> he's got the he's got the good personality. He does. He's a good guy. Are you going to the a business expo today? Carrie's going to go. Carrie will be mm -hmm. there. So he's going to have there. a booth. He's going to have a booth and talk about some of the same stuff. And I think he's having a drawing, so he might be able to win something. 
I'm going to ask you, um, when Carrie used to come on the show, I don't know how long you've been there, but I don't know Eight if you years. were, there's been any, so you weren't there when I was doing interviews with him. Mm -hmm. um, he used to come on the show and tell me that they did something for, I think it was senior citizens, that they put on the refrigerator or something that would tell, see if emergency personnel came in, they would know what kind of medications they were on. Do you still do that? Do you know? I could do that for somebody if they wanted. We, it's not like a program that we have right okay. now. Okay. Um, we're all kind right. of focusing on all this stuff, but if anybody wanted anything like that, of course I would. Sure. I could put that together. Sure. Right. It is so easy, even in my case, where I, I usually, like when I go home today, I will have my pills in a little mm -hmm. cup, and I know i got to take them a couple of them tonight and then tomorrow morning's the big dose mm -hmm. um but i have to do it now or i'll forget so you it's very easy to forget oh for sure anybody that uh, you know i don't think you have to be old <laughs> no you don't have to be I decrepit think, i think but um i used to even do like pill keepers but i used i was on some stuff for a while a couple years ago and i i even did it for myself mm -hmm. you know you can buy those um Things so, that, yeah, yeah. Packs and do them yourself. And I know a lot of people that will go in and do them for their parents. They go, okay, every Sunday I go and I fill up mm -hmm, the little keepers mm -hmm. for dad or whatever. And I think that helps, but a lot of people can't be there to do that. Right. And um, and those ones, they can still, I don't know, you can still kind of mess those up because they can move them out this right, way. Right, They're kind of sealed in there so you know. Right. And I, like I said, I do think we've had some positive feedback and I do think it is helping people remember to take their meds and that's what you want you want to keep them healthy you know what bothers me Ticey, mm -hmm. is uh the folks that are on limited income mm -hmm. and they're splitting their pills in half and that's not a good thing to I do no it's not it scares me really because yeah I really and i understand though i you know it's, it's hard when yeah you're fixed income and stuff but um yeah there's something i mean you're risking your health mm -hmm. i don't know but yeah. especially heart medicines or diabetes medicines it's, it's it's to dangerous to do that. You know, we are in the allergy season. I think you and I even did a feature on it one time. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed even even when it was snowy out, my allergies were getting bad. I heard bad. it's supposed to be very bad this year. This is supposed to be the worst. Because of the crazy winter that we mm -hmm. had. For some reason, it, yeah. the allergies are going to be way worse. Is there anything Although you can do? Although I did notice do? less colds this winter. Really? Mm-hmm. I know I don't know if it's so cold that the germs couldn't grow or what was going on, but I noticed a lot of people were like, "Yeah." Not gonna wood. I did not get sick this winter. Neither did I. Yeah. I did at the end when it was starting to get warm. Yeah. I got yeah. sick, but um, you you know I noticed a lot of people were saying that like, "Yeah, I had a good winter. I haven't been sick all winter." Yeah. But I think so, usually our weather's so crazy that it changes and that yep. kind of screws you up and things grow and whatever. But I think that. Um, this year it was so cold, nothing could grow. Did um, is there anything they can do about allergies, state Ticey, as far as uh, to th to thwart it off so it doesn't hit you, or are you pretty much susceptible in yeah, this climate? Well, unless you're getting allergy shots from your doctor, that mm -hmm. helps a lot of people. A lot of okay. people who have bad allergies, you know, you have to go in and get tested, and then they what they do is they give. I think it's usually weekly people get allergy shots, um, or depending how bad it is. Mm -hmm. um, but then they give you a little dose of what you're allergic to, and then your body kind of works up immunity. So that does help a lot of people. If yeah. you have bad allergies, that's what you need to do. And that has nothing to do with what we do. Do you have a problem with that allergies at all? No, I don't. No? Luckily. So I do. <laughs> I do. Last night, my, my kids were, do. My son does. Well, it seems like younger kids uh, mm -hmm. have it more. Like last night, my eyes were watering, and it had to do with whatever was outside, because mm -hmm. we had the windows open. It was mm -hmm. hot in our sunroom, so we had some windows open and I, it, something was bothering me, probably the pollen. As far as medication goes, or anything over the counter, um, some people just take a daily, during this time of year, Claritin or Zyrtec or Allegra, any of those, because they're non-drowsy, mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. can just take them once a day, and they usually do help people um, kind of ward that off a little bit, they know, and usually you don't have to take it all year round, every day, right. but usually during the seasons. During the season. During the season, they will take and, it. And a lot of that stuff wasn't over the counter in, in, until recently. Yeah. Right? Uh, when I first became a pharmacist, it wasn't. So uh, I don't know, within the last 15 years. Probably. I mean, it used to only be Benadryl. And Benadryl yeah. makes you sleepy. Everything else made you sleepy. Yeah. And Claritin was still a prescription probably at least 10 years. Oh, at least. Maybe, at least, maybe less. Yeah, maybe less than that. 
Um, it all runs together now. You mentioned, you mentioned <laughs> shots. You give shots. I do. Um, I, I remember you were you, you can give shingle shots. Um, right now it's flu shots. Much flu shots, but those not till fall. Right. Um, and then pneumonia you can get anytime. We do. We always have that because um, you only need a pneumonia shot about every five to ten years. To I'm going to get that this year. I, I I think I had a prescription. And that's probably you don't need a prescription for that one. No. Mm -mm. No, pneumonia and flu, you can come in and get on your own whenever. Okay. I mean, flu, Which I got from season. you, flu shot last fall. Yeah, you fall, did. Mm -hmm. After the show, as a matter yeah. of fact. Yeah. Um, but, but, but oh, yeah, I know what it is. I have a shingles prescription. I imagine that's probably outdated. Probably. probably shingles, you, know. you do need a prescription for. Yeah. It's called Zostavax. We do that. You can get that anytime. And that's the one that I'm, I'll am i be busy with now. Um, you do need a prescription for your doctor. They can call it in. They can write you a prescription. But for some reason, it's only good for one month from the date that it was written. Oh. I don't know why. Most, most that's a lot. Just a law that they have. I mean, pill prescriptions, medication prescriptions are good for six months from the date that they're written, or a whole year with your refills. So I don't know why they put only a month. But it's no big deal for me to call the doctor and get a new one. Right. Especially if it's a local doctor, I can get a hold of them really fast. But. Um, I read that. Shingles are catching. Is that true? They're not. They're, this, this is so confusing for people. The shingles virus is the same virus that's chickenpox. So if you get chickenpox in your life, then you can develop shingles later. Okay? The virus is already in your system. You can't get them. You can't get shingles from anybody. If you were to have shingles, you can't give them to me because I've already had chickenpox and I already have the virus inside. So it doesn't matter. But if I didn't, if there was somebody, if he didn't have chicken, <laughs> chicken pox ever, you could give chicken pox to him if he had shingles. Oh. So it's very confusing. So they, it is catchy for some people if you haven't had chicken pox or you haven't been va vaccinated for chicken pox, then you can give, somebody who has shingles can give somebody Okay. Chicken, but you can't give shingles to somebody else. They're, they're actually, in, in this newspaper article I read the other day, they are really pushing people to get... Mm -hmm. The shingles. Well, vaccine. and I think shingles is more prevalent. It seems like everybody's getting it. But I, I had read somewhere that because kids are vaccinated now for chickenpox, which is a good thing, mm -hmm. um, they, we're not constantly being exposed. Right. Because nobody gets chickenpox anymore. Right. So, before, you'd constantly be exposed by kids you see or your children or your grandchildren or nieces and nephews. So you'd have a little dose of that so it would boost your immunity. So then you wouldn't get the shingles mm -hmm. as often. Well now, we're not being re-exposed constantly naturally. Right. So that's why people are needing the shingles. Yeah, I, rem I remember when I was a kid, mm -hmm. um, second grade when I was third grade when I got the chicken pox, everybody in that yeah. classroom was sick right. with it. You right. know, I mean, it was that Catchy. Then that's how it was, right? Yeah, that's super catchy. But now that they have the vaccine, we're not getting exposed as adults mm -hmm. to our children. So then we're, you know, we're not being able to fight that off. But you can't get the shingles vaccine until you're 50 or 60. Some insurances won't pay for it until you're 60. Really? Mm -hmm. it, it's not approved for anybody younger, but younger people can get shingles. Sure. So um, I didn't know that there was an age. Yeah, I think it's more like if you're younger and you get it. Um, you're going to suffer through that for a little while, but you usually don't have lasting effects. You don't have the neuropathy and things like that uh -huh. if you're younger uh -huh. and you get them. Wait, the older you get, the less your immune system works as well, uh -huh. and then those are the people that get that post um, hepatic pain and things like that. My mother that. had it forever. Oh, uh, yeah, it's miserable. You know, it she really said it was miserable. just painful as heck, and, mm -hmm. and it, it and didn't want to go away. And the shot is no big deal. It's a little tiny needle, and most people can't even feel it, very little side effects, but it's expensive. So if it's not covered, it's a couple it's, hundred bucks. Isn't it's it? like I think it's up to like two hundred and fifteen or two hundred and twenty yeah. something like that. Most insurances recover. Medicare Part D covers it, but every card covers it differently. So I never know. Some some it covers it one hundred percent. Others they'll charge them one hundred fifty dollars for their copay. Right, right. So I don't know until I run it through. Right. Um, we we talked about allergies because this is the time of year that uh, they they hit, and it probably hasn't even hit the full mark yet. No, it's no, going to happen. Yet. It's going to yeah. happen. Um, son, a lot of you and I did have discussed this too. Um, mm -hmm. People should be wearing hats and sunscreen, uh, sunscreen um, when they go out into the sun because it can cause a, a, um, 
early aging and it also can cause cancer, obviously, skin right. cancer. Um, now, is there, there's a number on, on the, the, the kind that you should wear. Is it like 25 or 50? 30 is like the... 30? Yeah. Like that's a good thing to wear every day. Okay. Um, you, you can even get moisturizers because a lot of times you don't want to slather sunscreen on. It's that greasy, you know, and right, if, right. if you're just on your day-to-day -day just being out. But you can get sun damage just by going about your day, going in and out of the even, car. Even if the sun's not out. out. Right. Right. You know, if it's cloudy, even you can get some. Right, and it, it is a dangerous. You know, I mean, if you've ever been to Dr. Guido or Dr. Miranda, you yeah, know, right. you know, you know, they're cutting people up all the time, right. getting stuff out, and um, it's a sh shame because I love the sun, but yeah, I know. yeah especially because we don't see it very often around here. Um, I think people are less um, likely to be protective of it too because we're so excited to have summer and then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they're not being real protective about things. I think people are smarter than they used to be. My mom used to say they used to yeah. you know, lay out oh, foil boxes and yeah. <laughs> things like that. But um, yeah, sunscreen is definitely an important thing to have on you at all times and to really use and you're, you're, your kids up with. You're a runner, aren't you? Uh, no, I that? bike. I bike. It was a biking yeah. that there was a picture of you in the survey. Yeah. You were biking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you'd have to be careful with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know when you're out bike bicycling. Right. I haven't even got out yet this summer. I think I went one so far. Really? Mm -hmm. I got to yeah. wait till it's warmer. I don't yeah. Like it's cold. yeah. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Um, I can't believe it's been almost a year since we talked about uh, the bocce tournaments yeah. at, uh, at the church or mm -hmm. at the school. At the school. At the school. Yeah. Uh, what was the nun's name that came on the show? Sister Marie. Sister Mo, I call her. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Nice girl. Nice she lady. is. I like yeah. her a lot. She's yeah. fun. Uh, um, you got something coming up. We do. I'm the chairperson for the Bocce Tournament for St. John. And um, <laughs> we run it on May 16th and 17th at the Sons of Italy in Ashtabula. Gosh, that's right around the corner. Yeah. My deadline, actually, for teams is next Monday. Um, but we right now I have 27 teams signed up. Do you really? Mm -hmm. Last year I think I had 33, so I'll I'll get a num. Everybody's always last minute. I'll get a, a bunch of them this week. So if there's anybody out there that plays bocce and would like to, okay. Play. Are you Italian? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Okay. My maiden name's Caffaro. Caffaro. Mm -hmm. Not the mall. No, no. no. <laughs> so you are you, you're Italian, so you know yeah. about bocce. Yeah. In this tournament, I play in a league too, but in this tournament, I play with my dad and my brother and my sister-in-law. And we have a family team, so okay. that's pretty fun. But we have a master's division for people who are like serious players, because I get people <laughs> from Cleveland and Erie and Youngstown really? that come up for it. Yeah, and then um, where's this going to be at? At, at the, the Sons at the, of Italy. At Italy. the Sons of Italy, mm -hmm, which is on Columbus Avenue. And this is a, a fundraiser. For, fundraiser for St. John's School. For St. John's. Mm -hmm. My kids both go to St. John, and I'm an alumni from there. Right. Yeah, it's a it's a fun event. Uh, we get a lot of alumni that come, and a lot of supporters of the school, and it's also. Um, we we raise some money, like about five thousand dollars usually. No kidding. For school, yeah. Just from that? Mm -hmm. No kidding. Mm -hmm. It's a hundred dollars registration for the teams. We also have an amateur division, so like the parents from the school and people who don't really play bocce, we right. can play in that and compete and have fun. So we keep it separate from the serious players. You gotta get Sister Mo back on the show here because she was a fun, fun. Interview. She's fun. Yeah. Yeah, she was great. She's really good for our school. So. Yeah, yeah. I, and afterwards, I've seen pictures of her in the paper now. Now I got to know her and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like her to come back, even though we probably can't fit her in now because it's just around the corner. Um, yeah. But if she wants to come in, she can come in anytime. She even plays bocce. They have Does a, she really? Uh, some of her nun friends and her have a team. They call themselves the Holy Rollers. <laughs> Which I like. <laughs> That's hilarious. The holy roll. <laughs> um, that is that is so, so cool. How is St. John's doing now? They had a little problem there. Uh, yeah, since we've got uh, it's really well, really well. Doing since, good. Yeah, we got the new building. They're um, they just put on a new cafeteria and they broke ground for the new gymnasium. It's really exciting. So yeah. was, I mean, growing. I'm not an official spokesperson for the school, but I know that our enrollment has gone up every year in the last three years. We have, like, before it would become, you know, we might stay the same, we right, lose right. a couple. The last couple of years, there's been, like, leaps and bounds percentage-wise, and I don't know the numbers, but... Good. Yeah, so it's good. good. Um, how old are your kids? Mm -hmm. My son's in eighth grade, and my daughter's in fifth. Oh, there's so little, little, little ones. 
eighth grade. <laughs> well, eighth grade is about the time that uh, the boys start to get a little crazy. Mm, yeah. You know, a little wild. Yeah. Boys will be boys. That that happens. <laughs> uh, you know, Brenda uh, Cobb. Right. She, she her, her son goes there, I think. Yeah, they're friends. My son. Oh, are they? Mm -hmm. And she said that uh, he'd been sick with a lot of illnesses and stuff, but he's taking medicine for it and he's doing well now. And she goes, I don't know whether I like him anymore. I go, what do you mean? She goes, he just is not the same little boy that I remember. None of them are I go, the when age. they hit that, that age, that's what happens. It's fun to watch him yeah. become an adult, though. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And I just think in a couple of years you'll be buying him a car. I know. <laughs> don't even say that. <laughs> Always fun to have you on, Tacey. Thanks, I, I got you come back maybe next month or, or okay. when sometime. You're back. Uh, yeah, when I come back. And. Uh, um, I'm sure we all, there's tons of things out there we can talk about, okay? Absolutely. Um, I know, I, I really would like to get uh, you to talk about, if we could, um, I have a real penchant for bugs. I can't stand sitting out, I hate uh, mosquitoes and that sort of stuff, and you can get sick from mm -hmm. mosquito bites and ticks, and I mm -hmm. uh, thought maybe you could do a little research on that, maybe sure. give some updates on that Absolutely. if you would, okay? It's that time of year. It is, there. it is. All right. Thank you, Tacey, for coming Thanks, in. Pat.